Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here, and welcome on into my, I guess, reaction and thoughts on everything that Marvel has released and revealed at San Diego Comic-Con this weekend. And there's a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about the first panel with the animations and everything like that, because I feel like that's really, I feel most strong about, like, we're going to get Lego sets for this, because just looking at some of the past things and, and what they've done with Marvel, I think it makes a lot of sense. And of course, we'll talk about uh, what was revealed at the actual, I guess, uh, MCU panel about Phase 4 five and six so pretty crazy stuff uh, honestly uh, they just kept uh, going and going so let's go ahead and let's talk about the animated stuff i think going into this the thing that i was most looking forward to absolutely because it's my favorite disney plus show so far i know it's not everyone's but what if is my favorite i love these sort of stories uh, that they tell, taking, you know, a spin on something that we know and love for so long, and then putting this unique twist on it. And some of the concepts uh, that they talked about here for the second one, of course, the people there actually got to see the episode uh, of, I, it was called, I think, Captain Carter uh, Fights the Hydra Stomper, which is, I believe it's meant to be sort of uh, a, a special, been of the Winter Soldier since that's what like the end credit scene sort of set up in that first episode. So I love what if we actually did like weekly reviews uh, of every single episode because it seems to be like Lego's favorite show out of everything so far because it's the only Disney Plus show that has gotten sets for Marvel. So I think that's really interesting just going into a lot of the things that we're going to talk about here. So I definitely feel like season two will get a lot of stuff. Some of the ideas of like the Mandarin versus Odin and a Hela episode and just a bunch of these different concepts sort of all focusing on the phase four movies, I think is very interesting. The move, the other show that I was really looking forward to was a uh, Spider-Man freshman year. And I was, you know, the way they set this up, they're like, this is going to be his origin. This is uh, the year before we see him in civil war and everything like that, how he got bitten, everything like that. Or I guess the year of civil war, whatever leading up all that, you know what I'm saying. So that was the premise. That's what they set up. But then at the panel, they're like, no, this is a completely different story. This is instead of Tony Stark being his mentor, you could see here the picture of uh, Norman Osborn actually recruiting him to come work, I guess, at Oscorp. And what's interesting about this is that it is this offshoot of the MCU because if you look at some of, specifically one of the actors that they cast was Charlie Cox as Daredevil in the show. He's going to be reprising his role as Daredevil there. Of course, he was last in No Way Home, and we'll talk about him in a bit. But uh, yeah, I love Norman Osborn's look. I think it looks really awesome. A lot of people want Giancarlo Esposito to play him, and I think that would be fantastic. Uh, he plays, I guess, a very similar character in different shows uh you know the businessman and everything like that but uh, in another animated show he plays lex luther and i think you know would be great if he was him in the show i think he'd be great in the mcu if they did bring that in but what's strange is just like you've got scorpion and doc ock and all these other very comic book e villains and it's just yeah i don't know i was really looking forward to this was i and i said this i think the last time that I did a video talking about this, um, just prediction wise, I, I said this is going to be how we're going to get that homemade suit. And now we aren't because it's not any of these suits here. You could see the homemade suit, the, fir the first suit. That That's not the one that we see in Civil War. And then also, like, there's a Future Foundation suit, so that's really cool. I'm excited about that. And, and the Hornet costume and all that. Like, these would make for fantastic minifigures. And I feel like this is a really great shot of getting a lot of sets from it, uh, just some of the villains in place of whether it's in place of comic book sets uh, for Spider-Man. I, I just feel like this show is going to lend itself really well. The other thing that I really loved was the What If episode of the Zombies. And I was really excited about the show. It is going to be mature rated, R-rated, but unfortunately, I just, I'm not interested in the character lineup, if I'm being honest, it's specifically the heroes. It's just it's all current people. And what I loved was that it was the sort of the story was that in, in coming back from the quantum realm, Janet infected everyone and everything. So I was really like looking forward to that. And then for them to just have all of the survivors now be 
everyone from the Phase 4 shows and movies, I just... I hope there's more people. I just don't care about this lineup very much. And it's just very convenient that, oh, it's everyone you know and love from your from the recent show. It just it doesn't it doesn't fly with me personally. Um but the villains, however, the the actual team of dead zombies and, and heroes and villains uh is crazy with Icarus and uh the abomination and whoever that is in the back in red, but even Wanda's back, Cap's back. Like I really uh, I like how it's a mix of characters from uh, across both heroes and villains, but it's a it's a spread across all of the phases, which to me is more important. Um, the other one is I'm Groot. I, again, I feel like we really have a set already for this with the I'm Groot set. It's perfectly released with that animation. Uh, very quickly, X-Men. Uh, I've never watched the original show. I know the theme, of course, and I've seen a lot of the designs for characters, and I'm very excited to see, like, Nightcrawler and things like that, and I hope that LEGO continues to do this like they did with the Wolverine mech. I hope that they will continue and actually introduce uh, more X-Men sets now that it's back over here with Disney. They've got the rights. Disney is now, you know, bringing them back into the comics and all that stuff, so I really hope that uh, down the line or, or maybe when the show launches that we could get like an X mansion and even if it's based off of the show I, I don't care because we will be getting so many really cool designs for all these X-Men we have never gotten before that we really should have over the last 10 years uh, of this theme. Now moving into Saturday's presentation with uh, everything uh, MCU related to the, 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 the theatrical movies and then also ones uh, the television shows on Disney Plus, there's a lot, and I mean a lot to go through, and I'm very shocked uh, by a lot of things. So, they announced that Phase 4 will be ending um, this year, and that sort of took me by surprise. Uh, Black Panther 2, uh, Wakanda Forever, will be the end of that, and the very first movie is going to be Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania in February. So... I don't know how I feel about that. They also dropped the She-Hulk trailer, which I, I don't like the CGI still. I think it's very wonky. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, fourth wall breaking. However, the rest of it, I thought like the, the story seems very interesting with Wong and uh, the Abomination and even just having Bruce back and you know mentoring his cousin and everything. I really love all that. And then the end with that flip. Oh my goodness, that suit is just absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I'm really hoping that if there is a minifigure series too, if I had to pick, having not watched the show yet, if I were to pick two minifigures to get for uh, the She-Hulk show, it would probably be, of course, She-Hulk, and then, of course, Daredevil in that really beautiful suit. I really hope it's that uh, Wakanda Forever. I thought the trailer was, yeah, very powerful, very sad. I, I feel like this is going to be a very serious movie, and that's probably a good thing just given everyone's recent criticisms of everything, but I'm very excited to be seeing those sets like literally any day now because they come out in October. We've already been seeing some sets revealed for October and I, I'm excited to see what that's going to be. I'm not the biggest fan of Namor's look here. I think it's very interesting take uh, of this, but however, Atuma and the other Atlanteans, I think, look incredible. And I can't wait to see what LEGO does. They have to make new pieces here. And, uh, yeah, the, we'll see these sets literally any day, which has me really excited. I think I'm honestly, I'm more excited about the sets than I am uh, the actual movie, unfortunately. I, I just, I'm not sure really how you go about doing a film without Chadwick Boseman. So, I'm intrigued i wouldn't even i'm not excited by the prospect of that but i'm intrigued to see where things go and even the introduction of iron heart and potentially she'll be in one of the sets as well we know there are uh three or, or four i i don't recall but I, i'm very excited to to see this very soon anyways amen and the wasp quantum mania we'll probably hear about sets for this very soon uh, I'm not sure when exactly we'd see sets. I guess January. If the movie's coming out in February, we should be seeing them pretty soon, honestly, uh, potentially. This movie sounds insane. Uh, we've got, from the footage, they talked about Kang, Bill Murray's character, and then most important to me 
is Modoc, and I love Modoc and and Doctor Doom. They're two of my favorite MCU villains. Probably Doctor Doom might be my favorite. Um, and I used to have the name, and I've talked about this before, but I combined the two and made the name Mo Doctor Doom. So the fact that Modoc presumably will be in a Quantum Mania set, and we're gonna be seeing this so soon as well. I, I'm so excited to see that, and we also saw Casey's uh, outfit t- as well, uh, which looks really cool, and I really hope that Lego does justice to her and Wasp's outfits, because I feel like Wasp has really gotten the short end of the stick recently when it comes to accuracy of her minifigure. And then with Secret Invasion, I don't expect to be seeing any sets for, since that's just not the way that they're going about things with the Disney Plus shows, and I think... I'd rather them sort of maybe go back first. I don't know. It's tough. I think they should do current stuff, but also go back and complete what they've sort of missed out on. And now they can brand it under the multiverse saga. I'm jumping ahead a bit here, but this whole three phases, four, five, and six, are the multiverse saga. Um, So easy to rebrand the box. It's the same color logo and everything like that. So looking forward to hopefully getting sets down the line. Um, Hopefully we'll have to wait until phase seven to actually be getting sets from 4, 5, and 6, but even Phase 7 isn't that far away, really. <laughs> uh, anyways, next up we have uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, of course, will be seeing sets uh, minus 2-3 to three months. I would suspect that we see them maybe in March, uh, I, I guess, and then going ahead into the summer, we've got Echo, so again, maybe a Marvel minifigure Series 3. I'm jumping ahead, assuming we'll get a Marvel Series 2, because it just it's very logical uh, to do that. Same with Loki. And then the Marvels in July. Uh, we just recently did a review of Miss Marvel and what I thought of the show. And uh, yeah, I think, of course, we'll see sets for that, I guess, probably in May. Um, yeah, probably May, I would assume, or June, But because uh, it's almost August, the release of that. And then we have Blade in November, and I'm not sure if this is going to be R-rated, because now they aren't afraid to do that. We see that with uh, the zombie show, but then we're also going to be seeing that presumably with Deadpool 3, which isn't going to be called Deadpool 3, I think more of the recent rumors are saying. Um, so yeah, I'd be interested to see if this is R-rated. Are we going to get a set off of it? I, I hope so. I'd love to get a MCU Blade minifigure, and presumably maybe even Black Knight, I think, is in that and then uh, Ironheart again. I'm not sure if she'll she, maybe she'll be in one of the Black Panther sets. And then with Agatha, uh, Coven of Chaos, again same thing. It's a show, so not sure when that will be coming out. And then of course Daredevil, which is what I'm very very excited about. An 18 episode show. That is this is the first I would say television show that's going on Disney Plus from Marvel because yes all the rest they're all TV you know but 18 that's a full season run pretty much versus you know the six to nine I think it's very interesting that Daredevil is gonna have that many and it's called Born Again um, and you know we're getting Kingpin in the show so very excited and I believe they're also appearing in Echo first so the setup here for this show is gonna be really exciting and I'm very happy that it's going to be in the MCU and also just the fact that you know they're talking about recasting Elektra and things like that and I I don't want the original show to be canon and that's only because of what's attached to that with the rest of the other shows which I find a little bit lackluster I hope they pick and choose what they want to bring in over uh, from that universe I think Um, because really everything's canon now at this point uh, like DC but uh, yeah, then we've got Captain America, New World Order uh, in May 2024. Uh, so yeah, sets for that. Obviously, they're, they're, I'd be shocked if we don't get it. By then, like the Sam Wilson figure, unless there's more sets from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, by then, uh, you know, we definitely will be getting that outfit or a new outfit. And I assume Bucky will be there too. So yeah, just new outfits for them and that. And we also have the Thunderbolts. And uh, yeah, very excited about that. And whoever's going to be there, how they're going to do that without Thunderbolt Ross. Unfortunately, him passing away recently. So yeah, Uh, but then that's Phase 5. I don't know if it's the best lineup personally, but you know, I am excited nonetheless uh, for all this stuff. It's just weird that it's only two years. This phase is only two years. 
I don't know how I feel about that. And then Phase 5 kicks off uh, with the Fantastic Four movie, which is everything to me. I, I love the Fantastic Four. I've said this for years now, that I would give up the entire year's worth of Marvel and DC superheroes, which isn't much now, to just get the Fantastic Four in a singular set, and I would be content. So the fact that now there's a movie, uh, there's, of course, Lego would not miss the opportunity to do sets off of this movie. Um, I know that it's that far away, unfortunately, but now we do have a date which means that uh, at least by then, I suspect we'll have the Fantastic Four. And maybe, I don't know, I'm really jumping ahead here, but maybe that year they do a Baxter Building modular or something like that to release alongside that movie, I think would be really fun, like from the comics or something like that. Sorry, so Fantastic Four isn't the first thing in Phase Six. There is probably, I'm going to guess that's a show, just because like the last show would have been Daredevil and there is a really big gap in between there. Uh, and then skipping ahead, a total of five different things, probably a combination of movies and shows. We have the Avengers, the King Dynasty, followed by two more things. Again, probably one show, one movie. The Avengers Secret Wars. And very blown away by that six-month gap. That is a very bold move on Marvel and Disney's part. Now, I'm very excited. I have no doubt that they will pull that off. I hope that it's not the same director or directors doing the same movies because they're going to go absolutely nuts. Just the, the shooting of this movie, the editing of this movie, all having to wrap this up in a year, I think is very crazy. And I, I'm sad in a lot of ways that while, you know, Phase 4 gave us the most content we've ever had in any phase between 1, 2, and 3, it just seems so short. And then 2... It is obviously even with Daredevil just having 18 episodes, it's it's gonna beat Phase Four, and I just, you know, I I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like it's so soon, and I'm just sort of sad that you know 2025. It's not that far, and I'm excited to have an Avengers movie. I'm excited to have two movies. It's just so close. Looking ahead to just maybe fill in some of those gaps in Phase 6, if I had to guess, I would assume Doctor Strange 3 would be there somewhere, and then I'd also hope to get maybe another fifth Thor movie, uh, just to even expand our roster uh, for those Avengers movies, uh, whether Hercules you know, sticks around in the long run or whatever uh, happens there, I, I really would hope... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's an Eternals something announced. I, I heard there's rumblings of that. It wasn't my favorite movie, but I just feel like it would probably be beneficial to see them pop up again before the craziness of the Avengers. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What is your favorite announcement here? For me, it's probably the Daredevil show and reveal from She-Hulk and the, the fact that we now have a date for Fantastic Four, but those two Avengers movies are what has me the most excited, I think, for sure. But yeah, comment it down below. What do you think of everything? I, I'd love to hear, maybe share your thoughts. What do you think some of those Phase 6 movies and shows will be? Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hope you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next one.